the dowel. This is an oak dowel that I got from Lowe's Hardware. Sanded it really smooth, put some oil on it. I got it last weekend. I've oiled it now every day and it's becoming stronger and more flexible. It's a very good solution. It's about 10 bucks and maybe a dollar in oil and sandpaper. So you can pick one of these up anywhere and it doubles as a walking stick. It's the same height as a regular walking stick. You can get this. This is called a Hanbo or Japanese Hanbo or an Okinawan Hanbo in martial arts. But it's basically just a fighting stick, a walking stick or a self-defense stick. You can call it whatever you want. Start with it in the middle and you're gonna twist it like this to get some blood flowing into the joints. And a stash says, hello, big fan. Stash, I'm a big fan of you too. Thanks for being here today. Just twisting back and forth. You wanna get the blood flowing into the joint, stay safe from injury when you learn how to fight with sticks. You have every right to defend yourself. I want you to learn how to defend yourself. Uh, Aqua the Cast says, good afternoon. Texan Rider, good afternoon. LM, good afternoon. It's good to see you. Thank you, uh, Sadesh. So you're just going back and forth for about 30 seconds in one hand, and then I'm going to teach you how to use both sides equally. I want you to fight ambidextrously, and you're going to do the same thing 30 seconds on the other hand. Now, we've been losing power today. If we lose power, we'll step up, or rejoin this a little bit later. But I th think we should be good. It looks like maybe they've got it fixed. We're just going back and forth, 30 seconds per hand. And this is just a basic warm-up move. Now, the advantages of using a stick for self-defense, it's longer than a knife. You create distance between you and the threat, so you have a reach advantage. You can reach them, they can't reach you. It's a lot longer than that. The wood isn't gonna bleed. They can slice it all they want. I'd rather have them cut this than to slice me or stab me. So I'd like this to do the work, and it's a force multiplier, especially something like this oak, or if you get a good piece of hickory, or even poplar. You can get poplar, they're less expensive. It's about five bucks, six bucks. Go, if you can find it, get an oak dowel. This one is an inch and a quarter, but I have big hands. Anything close to an inch or about an inch is a perfect diameter and 36 inches long. I'm gonna show you how to fight with it. So using a stick like this, just in a very simple way, basic way, you can create a lot of force and stop somebody, move somebody back, smash them off of you, break the joint, uh, knock the knife out of their hand. And I'm not gonna focus a lot on blocking techniques. Now, if you do traditional hanbo techniques, a lot of the hanbo techniques go into blocking, striking motions, or you're here and you're blocking and you're deflecting as someone's coming at you. When you begin self-defense, I want you to learn how to hit them first. If you can, hit them first or hit them at the same time or even a fraction of a second after they hit you, but don't focus too much on trying to block and trying to um, spin them to the ground. All those techniques do work. Those are great techniques and I teach those techniques, but I teach them at a high level and more for the esoteric or the interesting aspect of the martial arts, right? When I teach basic self-defense, we're not blocking anything. Your goal is to smash them, to hit them back. Good thing I put that blade in. It just went into my stomach. I was wondering which way it was gonna go when I hit it. But when I uh, thrust, I'm gonna hit you before you hit me. That's my goal in self-defense. From this position, if I get it into the other hand and I have this power, I can thrust, I can strike down at an angle, come down on top, come through the middle, I can shift it to the other side, smashing straight through the jaw, through the temple, through the neck. And I want to do that instead of trying to time. And believe me, you can learn how to block. You can be like a boxer. Boxers learn how to parry, right? And they get really good after years and years and years of practice. They can parry or, or maybe like that Floyd Mayweather. He's really good at dodging. He's a great defensive fighter but he took many years to get to that level. I want you to pick up a stick, use your walking stick, your hiking stick or Japanese Hanbo, and immediately get into a better position and be able to create distance between you and the threat. Literally knock them back and stop them from coming in. Not blocking, not parrying, not doing all the fancy moves. Learn those later when you get deep into the martial art, but for self-defense, learn this uh, first technique first. So from here, there are two ways that you're going to move your hand onto your hanbo 
or your walking stick for self-defense, one is gonna come behind it. So you, you, you walk with it like this, like your hands on the ground, right? I'm gonna lower the camera just a little bit. I've been saying this for a couple days, my camera rig's broken, but we're gonna make do, right? So my hand is here, I'm just walking with it, leaning on it, you know, any, any way you would normally do, maybe you're using an Irish fighting stick, a shillelagh, however you use it is the right way to use it for mobility. You're either going to move your hand behind it and pick it up in this position, or you're gonna move your hand to the front and pick it up in this position. And that always reminds me of Brian Dennehy and that TV show I grew up on, Walking Tall. Speak, or what was that, uh, I think it was Teddy, Re Teddy Roosevelt, the American president who said, speak softly and carry a big stick. Or maybe it was Truman, it was some president, I think. Anyway, you're gonna start with your hand sliding down the backside. So I'm gonna show you many different techniques, basic, simple techniques to defend yourself, how to fight with sticks. I want you to always know how to defend yourself in the most simple, basic, effective way. If it doesn't work, we're not gonna do it. So you're gonna start here, your weight is on it, the threat presents itself. That means you're paying attention, you realize you need to get into a better position. You're gonna slide your hand down and simply bring this up and straight into his face for self-defense. That looks like this. My, my, uh, my here, I have to respond very quickly. He gives me no choice. I'm going to step and thrust. From here, step and thrust. Now, this is where... Think about the nose, the teeth, the throat, the solar plexus, all the targets that you can either remove or destroy. There is, there is definitely a net problem. I don't know if it's local just down here or if it's a big global thing again today. Every once in a while we run into this. I think there's a lot of activity out there, right? So my hand is here, it's behind the stick, and I just go straight in. I leverage the strength that I already have. Leverage the strength you have, pointing at this position. That's your first move. So here's how you practice. You stand like you're using it for a walking stick, slide your hand down, thrust straight up. Go slow at first, thrust, gradually pick it up. Practice bringing this other hand up to guard your head, don't let him hit your head, and then finally step in. When you step in, if I just do this, that has some power. When I step, that has stopping power. I want you to have a stopping power. So from here, when you get your whole body in behind that piece of wood, you're gonna hit really hard. Second technique. You're gonna start with your hand in the same position, you're gonna slide down the back, and then you're just gonna bring it into the other hand. Your hands are facing each other or in opposite directions, however you wanna think about it. From here, I'm going to thrust with two hands. So I step and I thrust straight forward. If you don't have time to step, just thrust. See how I extend my arms? I'm turning this front one, it's turning over, that locks it in place. The bottom one is turning up, that locks it in place. So from here, again, very simple. We're not gonna try to take the knife away. We're not gonna try to um, use some fancy Aikido and put them on the ground. We're gonna use military style bayonet attack. I slide it down, I bring it in here, thrust, right through the middle. Your goal is always gonna be going right through the middle first. It's that principle, the closest distance between two points is a straight line, and in this case, that's their face, their throat, their solar plexus, any part of the middle of the body. If you hit that, you're gonna do some damage for self-defense. So when you learn to defend yourself, stick fighting techniques, you slide down, bring it in, and thrust. So that's the second technique I want you to learn when you're practicing how to fight with sticks. Stick fighting techniques using a walking stick, keep it super simple. Third technique, I'm gonna start in the same position, I'm still coming behind. I'm gonna pick it up. And now I'm going to slide back and I'm gonna come forward almost like I'm chopping into a tree. And again, I'm gonna let the wood, I'm gonna let this hard, thick piece of oak, which is getting heavier by the day, by the way, because I keep oiling it. Use, I put some links below if you wanna see, if, if, you, if you can go to Lowe's, Home Depot, if you have that near you, or uh, Ace Hardware, any hardware store, or if you wanna get it online, I put three links below. Get a piece of wood, less than 10 bucks. Get some sandpaper, about a dollar, and a little bit of oil. And you're gonna use less than a dollar's worth of oil too. 
but you oil it every couple days. It's getting heavier and it's hitting harder and it becomes less breakable because of the oil that comes into it. All right. Uh, Hank says he broke his TV, losing his grip. Keep a good hand on your uh, stick so you don't break any more TVs. So you're gonna slide down, here's the threat, slide down, pick it up, and it's coming in from your shoulder, and you're just coming in, and you're thinking temple, neck, shoulder, hand, wrist, elbow. Hank, it's good to see you too. And you're just bringing it from here, and you're literally pulling with the backhand. That's the backhand, and you're pushing, pushing with that front hand. Your whole body is turning in like you're hitting a home run. This is all self-defense, so we're keeping it simple. So from here, quick review, I slide back, thrust straight in. Number two, slide back, comes in the other hand, thrust with two hands, turning over. This is all practice for you. Number three, slide down, lift, striking down at that angle. You could also come down on top, or you could come through the side. All three of those strikes, in fact, it's a good idea to practice all three of those strikes. For all from this position, sliding behind it. One more in this position, I'm gonna slide down, I'm gonna get it into that back hand, and I'm gonna push the back hand forward. Now notice how my hand is sliding. That's another reason you really wanna sand it. You wanna get a good amount of oil in it. Your hand is now gonna slide through, and that's gonna come across the other side of their face. And again, you're going for targets, you can remove or destroy their ability to see, their ability to breathe, their ability to be awake, knock them unconscious for self-defense, and you're coming through this way. Uh, ben in Tahoe says, nice, thank you, Ben. Bringing it here, and then I want you to practice, once you get those basic techniques down, in combination, put them together. So let's review. From here, one, I strike his face, bring it in the other hand, thrust, bring it from the shoulder, down, punching the back hand through, and then finally, from this position, you had bayonet attack. Think about rifle butt strike, for those of you military guys. From here, you're walking down the street, your hand slides down, you have to defend yourself, immediately you go into that first thrust, and it's like a jab in boxing. You're not trying to knock him out with a jab, you're just trying to stick your elbow straight and keep him out of your face, keep him at, at, at bay, keep him at distance. That sets you up for that big overhand cross that does knock him out. So this is your jab. That's stopping him a little bit. They're slowing him down, keep him back, pull back, thrust. And when you thrust, notice that I'm sliding through the front hand as I also turn over. That comes naturally after lots of practice. So go slowly, learn the technique, put those two together. Your hands here, slide down, thrust into the face, Thrust with the body, add number three. Bring in number four uh, from here, straight in, or if you wanna do a few more strikes, do a few more strikes if you've practiced before, add your strikes, but just build them up. And then put it into the other, other side. Hank, this is 36 inches. This is a dowel rod I got from Lowe's Depot on the, uh, Lowe's Depot, from Lowe's on the weekend. It was like $9.77 or something, it's oak an inch and a quarter I went big because I have big hands but you can get about an inch that's a perfect size for most people and it's nice and heavy I used three grits of sandpaper 80 120 and 220 and by the time I got done I got all the gnarly stuff off I got all the splinters off it's nice and smooth and I've been oiling it every day when I come in in the morning I oil it up let that oil soak in and the more oil this gets because what they do is they kiln dry and the kiln dry wood, they stick it into an oven. When they cut it down and shape it into something like this or two by four for your house, and they suck all the moisture out so that it doesn't rot. When you get it from the store, you've got to get that moisture back in, but you want oil like mineral oil or tongue oil, something lin boiled linseed oil. I like to use that a lot. And that starts to rejuvenate the wood, make it flexible again, heavy. And so when you're striking, you have all that strength and it's going to flex again before it breaks. So you're not gonna break it, it's gonna last forever, and it costs you about 10 bucks. From here, and I, I'm having some made um, Cane Masters, which is in a link below too. Cane Masters makes my Joe, that's my favorite Joe now. And uh, they make a bow, 
I'm still waiting for it. The, 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 the mail hasn't brought it yet, even though it was shipped last week and they're just down the street. And then, but I asked them to make me a Hanbo. This is called a Hanbo, Okina, Okinawan style martial arts or uh, Japanese style martial arts. They use the Hanbo, especially Aikido and other, uh, Aikido and, uh, what's the other one I'm thinking? Oh, the Ninja. I keep forgetting about the Ninjas. Nothing against the ninjas. Nothing against the ninjas. I just know too many ninjas. All right. Um, oil every day for a week, every week for a month, and every month for a year. Greg, that is amazing. I haven't seen it put that way, but Greg said every day for a week, and then every week for um, a month, and every month for a year. That's brilliant. And that'll keep the oil in it, and that'll keep it fresh, and it'll last you forever. All right. But a 36-inch Hanbo, you're leaning against it. You go to the other hand, do the same thing. Slide your hand behind, thrust to the face, two-handed thrust from that shoulder, either down, straight down, or across, and then bringing it through on the back side, rifle butt. So practice those in combination. Build your techniques like that. If you build your techniques, you'll always hit them more than once. The fight's not over till you win. That's a principle of self-defense. Almost everybody stops too soon. I want you to practice with multiple strikes so that you're just hitting the air and they're already on the ground unconscious, the cops are scooping them up and you're still, for self-defense, I want you to go home safe. I want this to work for you. When you learn self-defense, stick fighting techniques, I want you to learn combinations. Always practice in combination. Now the next thing I'm gonna show you before we come back to this, because I do wanna show you one traditional spinning motion. It comes in very fast, very powerful, very effective. Well, I just showed you that, but it's coming from here. But for here, I want you to use um, your hand in the front, right? So I, I, I said it's kind of like that TV show. And there was movies uh, that they remade it with The Rock, that walking tall, right? And I think The Rock's using a four by four or something. But just this idea of uh, be, walk, speak softly and carry a big stick. And so you're bringing your hand down the front. Hey, uh, Brian, it's good to see Brian. Zero Gluten says he likes... He or she likes holding the hombo, feels good, it's therapeutic. And Hank took some notes, he's gonna find it. Bring it from here, slide down the front, and just bring it up. Now from here, you have even more distance. And because it's not that long martial arts staffer, even the middle-sized Joe, and the Joe you can use like a katana or a you know, wooden sword, you can use the Joe, this one, is almost the perfect size for a one-handed weapon if you need to use one-handed weapon. The longer martial arts staffs are a little harder to use in one hand unless you have very strong hands and a lot of practice. So I say for most people, don't do one hand with the longer staff, but do it with this 36 inch Hanbo. Do it with your walking stick. So again, your hand starts here, it's gonna come down. And again, I want you to always start with a simple thrust. Simply creating distance between you and the threat. They've got a knife. You've got th almost 36 inches. Their knife is probably between 12 inches and 6 inches. Keep them away. From here, we're not going to go back to the ground every time because you're already in this position. From here, I want you to bring it to your shoulder. Go for the temple. Go for the top of the head. Go for the other temple. And again, you don't necessarily have to do those in self-defense in that order. But I want you to practice combinations. And so from here, your hand slides down. Hey, back up, you're too close. Stop them here, get the other hand on it. And when you have your hands apart, you'll be able to stop your strike. As soon as your hands come together, you've created a pivot point, which is perfect for baseball. But for self-defense, that means you'll over rotate and then you're open. They close the distance, you're in trouble. So what we wanna do instead is keep the hand here so that you can fight and stop and keep the stick, fight and stop and keep the stick between you and the threat. So from here, the hand slides down the front, thrust, one side, Wait, I'm gonna do one side, I'm gonna do the top, and I wanna do the other side. So thrust, one shoulder, down the middle, and the other shoulder. And again, it's just for you to practice going through a full range of motion and get used to different strikes. Put it in the other hand, do the same thing. Slide it down the front, bring it up, thrust, other hand comes on it, and this is, this is what I want you to do. I want you to practice getting your other hand on it because you're gonna be so much stronger with two hands. One, 
two, three. And then just practice that over and over. Down the front. Oh, thrust. I've got my thrust. One, two, three. This is also going to build strength in your shoulders, get you a lot of stronger, a lot healthier. Uh, Retro Man says, love the vid. Thanks, Retro Man. I love that you're here training with me and working out. Slide your hand down to the other side. Thrust, one side, middle, other side. Good. Hank's got some great advice. Down the middle, thrust, one, two, three. Steve, oh, thanks uh, for subscribing, Steve. I really appreciate it. You guys make this channel possible. The hand down the front also allows you to just bring it into the other hand and have this push-up position where the hand down the back, when you bring it in, you have this position. Now, one position is not better than the other. You'll do different things with different hand positions. From here, when you slide down the front, I just want you to bring it here because I want to talk about shoving them off using this bar of oak. Big, heavy, strong bar of oak. And from here, pull it all the way into your chest and simply step and thrust. So from here, good. Retro Man, I'm glad you got your stick. Retro Man said, got the walking stick out and actually practicing. Step in and thrust. Anytime you step, you put your body into motion and you hit them and you strike them, you move them back. So from here, it just, you're starting this position. Maybe they're closing the distance fast. You don't feel comfortable hitting because they look big, strong, or whatever. Or they're already in your face. You're going to bring it up and over. Just get it between the two of you. If you have to smack their head on the way by or rake it down their face on the way down, pull some teeth out, that's okay too for self-defense. But if they're this close, this is close quarters combat, self-defense, using your walking stick, bring it to your chest, and then just thrust right so from here up bam and that and you're gonna find this is such a powerful technique and remember it's oak against their nose teeth eyes eyeglasses throat against their body and you're letting the wood do the work let your walking stick do the work they close the distance maybe they put their hands on you you bring this up and you pull straight down that's gonna hit the top of those nerves and if it doesn't it's gonna break their bone as it pulls them down in this position. It's gonna drop them down, I pull them down, and then I blast them through the face. Once you're here, I want you to punch. And, and don't do one and stop. Don't do two and stop. Punch one, two, one, two, one, two. Pull your stomach up and you'll feel this is an ab workout. This is gonna get you really strong. So you're bringing this up, pull into your chest, strike. Steve said he's working out with a black thorn. Those are awesome. I haven't seen those in a while, but you're just going one, two, one, two, one, two. And you're striking their temple. You're striking their jaw. You're hitting them in a way that they're, gonna, they're either going to have to move back and guard their head, or you're just going to blast them. You're going to hit them, and they're, they're going to move back. The goal is self-defense. Defend yourself. Stick fighting techniques. Put the stick between you. Blast them. Punching. And then finish with a thrust to the solar plexus to create distance. Get him out of there, right? John Wayne used to do that when he pretended that he was uh, part Native American. He was a Comanche or a Cherokee or whatever. And he would talk to his, talk with his hands. I always remember that. So if I want you to think about, get him out of there, right? Create that distance, take this. Oh, since Amit, it's good to see you. Yeah, since Amit is also talking Blackthorn, it's a great, great uh, company. They make a great product. So your weight is on your stick, either hand, doesn't matter. They close the distance, they put hands on you. You get your stick up, pull it down between you, all the way in. If their hands are on your body, now that's on their nerves and the bone. If they don't let go, it's, it's either gonna collapse them down, and it pulls them down, and then you go back out, box them in the face a little bit, drop, change levels, get lower, and then drive. Either straight through the solar plexus, or if you wanna be fatal for self-defense if you have to, you go through the throat or just stick it back in their face. Blast them right through the middle. You're going to hit something between the nose, the eyes and the ears and the mouth. And you know what I mean? Right. And again, let the wood do the work. This heavy piece of oak going through their face is going to do a lot of damage. Even if you're not super strong anymore, you don't have to be. That's the whole purpose of fighting with sticks. You're leveraging what you have naturally. Now all of a sudden you have a lot more strength. 
And there's so much you can do with it, especially with this length. Now, the final thing I want to show you is, uh, Yank says, uh, Rock, thanks for this valuable training. My pleasure. Thank you for being here. Thank you for training with me, literally. You're going to take it down the back. So we've gone down the front and down the back. So we're going back down the back. And from this position, you now have 36 inches. You're going to do that. Turn your hip, lift your hand, and turn your thumb down to the ground. So you're just going to do this and down to the ground, up and down to the ground. You're just making a U, an upside down U, right? So from here, my thumb comes up, and as I turn my hip over, I do that U so it gets on the other side of my body. Now, between here and there is his head, his temple, his jaw, his neck, his arm, the knife that's in his hand, his hand. So from here, when I bring that up, it's literally going to strike. And it does, you don't even have to be that accurate. You just have to bring it up and through, up and through, up and through on the other side. When it comes out to the other side, get that other hand on it, and then you're able to keep fighting and fighting and fighting. So we start here, slide down, strike through, get that other hand on it. You can push through, you can strike here, change hand positions. And the last thing I want you to work on is changing, this is called staff walking or hand walking, just where you go from here to here and here to here, from one side to the other side. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna start to get you comfortable with moving your hands in one position and the other one. Then you can come out to the sides, bring your palm in, palm over, turn, out, out, and then coming side to side and going in the other direction. These are just different ways to get really comfortable with changing from one side to the other side so that you truly can fight ambidextrously and always keep the stick between you and the threat. All these things are very simple. They work. The more you practice, either hand position, palms out, is good. If you change hand positions, palm out, palm in, that's good. But play around with it. One of my favorite ones I forgot to mention was lift them up off the ground. Take the end of that, bend your knees a little bit, and as you come through, aim for the solar plexus and watch what happens for self-defense. You're going to move them up and back. There's nowhere else they can go, especially if you hit right in the middle. That's why using a walking stick for self-defense is so effective. People ask me all the time, can you use a walking stick for self-defense? And I say, absolutely, of course. And they say, why? Why can you walk... It's just a walking stick. I said, well, you know, it's, other than the obvious fact that you could use it like a baseball bat, there all of these thrusts create distance. That's the most important thing. Keep them away from you. Don't let them close the gap. Don't let them close the, and if they do, change from thrusts to shoves, and then boxing. And if you keep it super simple like that, you'll be able to defend yourself with a walking stick very, the first time you pick it up. Keep it super simple, train every day.